So if we look at the surface of the heart, there are coronary arteries that run on the heart. The heart is a muscle, and it's like any other muscle in the body. It's like the muscle in our arm, the biceps, the muscle in our leg, the calf muscle. It requires nutrition, it requires oxygenation. That nutrition and oxygenation gets to the heart muscle through these coronary arteries. Now there are three major coronary artery systems in our heart. The left anterior descending, which runs down the front of the heart and supplies most of the left ventricle, which is the pumping chamber. The circumflex marginal goes to the lateral part of the heart and some of the inferior part of the left ventricle. And then the right coronary artery goes to the inferior surface of the heart. These arteries are vital so that the heart gets its nutrition and oxygenation. If they become blocked, what can happen is patients can develop chest pain, can develop angina, and then go on to have a heart attack. So coronary artery disease is typically what we deal with quite commonly in, in our population. And that comes from blockages of cholesterol buildup and from plaque buildup in the coronary arteries. What's happening to the heart muscle then is that it's not getting enough blood supply. It's not getting enough oxygen and not getting enough nutrition. Typically, when patients begin to have that problem, they will have chest pain, chest pressure, and or shortness of breath when they try to go do something. Climb a hill, when they're working out, climb up steps, and it's usually exertionally related, but not always. It can come on abruptly without any sort of provocation at all. But it's important for patients to understand that it is a continuum and that this is a process quite often that gets worse over time. And so if not attended to either medically or by some intervention, by catheter-based intervention or surgical intervention, it can go on to cause a heart attack later on in life. So it's important that that get attended to.